I wanted to also say this morning that I am going to use some equipment. This is my weighted vest. If you have a weighted vest, feel free to use that. Um, and uh, I also have, these are like teeny tiny weights um, because the arm stuff that's in here is just built to like keep your heart rate up. So we're not like pumping a lot of iron. These are two pound weights. Um, you can also use um, uh, weights that wrap around your wrists, but don't do more than like a one or a two pound weight. Um, and then these are um, different TheraBands that are, um, or resistance bands. These are the ones that are already made into a circle, um, but you can take your normal TheraBand if you have one of those at home. Lots of our advanced and intermediate students do, um, and you can use those um, in, in that way this morning. So here we go. So this is our warm up. I'm not talking through most of it because I'll struggle to breathe if I do that. And because I'm doing this in silence because um, then you can play your own music over this as you do this. We're holding a second position here and we're contracting three times and then opening back up to neutral spine and ballet alignment huh, there. And then we're taking that contraction into our earlier squat and lunge sequence. You can make this bigger or smaller to match what you need for the day. And we're gonna come center. And now we're gonna work in parallel second and then opening out to deep turned out second. Parallel second like a fitness squat and then like a second Second, plie, second position, grand plie, right? Center, and here we do this in men's class. Come to standing. And now we're gonna do something that I'm gonna introduce in men's class um, when we get back into the classroom, which is in that parallel position, we're squatting and then we're doing a hip circle squat. Circle the other leg, squat and circle, squat and circle and circle.
Then we're gonna come to first position. Open our arms out to second. And then we're gonna do some brushing bottom arms forward. You can keep this low. This is to find your core, mostly. It's not about height yet. If you want a little bit more cardio work, you can lift and lower your arms for each one of these. To, that's the center sort of warm-up stuff. We're gonna to move to the bar now. As you can see, I don't have a bar right here, and that's okay. I'm gonna turn the fan on while I'm at it. You can use the wall, or I like this little skinny wall in my house. And we're just coming down into a lunge position. So I don't even need to use my bar yet. But you could, and if you did, you'd be holding it on. It would be, since my left leg's in front, I would have my left, I would, my bar would be on my left. You can also use a sturdy chair, you know, your bathroom countertop, your kitchen countertop, wherever you've got space. And then what we're doing is having pulsed down in our lunge, we're now staying down and we're straightening, squeezing your glute, and then coming back, straightening, straightening, coming back, straighten and squeeze, coming back. If you've got tight hips like I do, this is a great hip flexor stretch. I can feel this very deeply there. If you want a little bit more work there as you squeeze, you can also pop up in releve. I'm not going to keep that though because I don't need that today. You can also, I am going to do this, you can bring your arms up over your head. Still straightening, bend, straighten, bend, straighten. Now we're going to reach down and pull up. Draw up the other knee. Reach down, long lunge, switch feet. Reach down, switch. This is like, like a dance fitness Charleston. Okay, so then you can be sassy with this if you want. You can reach down. If you're looking for range of motion, take a little bit longer and get down into a really long lunge. Touch the floor with both hands. If you're here for cardio, you can hop these. Hop. Hop. There's probably a way to hop down into the lunge, but I'm not going to try that because my body doesn't want to do that. Come center. Legs turn in and stretch out and down like you're in a large chair pose, which isn't really a thing, but here it is. Then yes, turn out if you can go further and come down. You can come down very deeply if you like into what is essentially cobbler's pose. And you can either pulse there, which is plenty hard enough for me. And I even have to bring my feet into, well, these are my hands, into heart to do that. But you can also releve one at a time as you're holding this, or you can releve both, which is not gonna be in my practice today. You can also keep your hands here and releve both, which I can't physically do, so there you go. But you don't wanna be, see me now all the way down in like a proper cobbler's pose where my buns are not turned on. You don't wanna do that, okay? You wanna be up enough. So I'm actually gonna come up quite a bit because there's a place between cobbler's pose and what I can hold where I, I can't hold it. So I'm gonna come up here. Lots of us do this exercise up here and then you probably can go up, down, down, up, down, up. 
You don't need to straighten right now. If you can keep going, keep going with your heel. But I needed a moment. And then you can also change to this arm, center, stretch, center. Get a little bit of oblique work in there. And now we do stand up. Now we have to go back to your bar, if you have a bar you're using for this portion, because we have to do that other leg with all the lunges and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna step my left foot back so my right foot's in front. So if I had a bar, it would be in my right hand. Okay, and now I'm just pulsing in a very nice lunge. If you're concerned about your knees in lunge, Position. Keep in mind that people who are trying to protect their knees often try and keep their knee, the back knee, right underneath their hip, and that's a mistake. Stepping further out is more challenging for your body, but it also puts less pressure on your knee than trying to keep it more acutely bent. Okay, so you don't want to have your knee straight underneath your hip and then also be trying to do things that fitness people tell you like try and kiss the floor with the knee. That is gonna make anybody's knee hurt probably. So now we're done with our pulses and we're straightening and bending the back leg, which is surprisingly difficult. It makes my hip flexor tired and it also makes whew, my ankles tired. Now remember, you can do both here if you want, let's see, how do you do that? If you're doing both, when you bend, you releve so that you're pushing back with everything and coming forward with everything. So if, you're, if that's there for you, there it is. My ankle's on fire. Um, now you're going into your, um, your Charleston on the other side. So you just came in and then your right knee comes up. And then you're stretching back with your left here and down. It doesn't matter which side you do first. When we do um, a day of rotator work, I'll always start with my weaker side first because I actually can't finish. I find if I start with my strong side, um, it's really, really not fun. So here we are. We're doing our Charleston. Remember, you can jump this through my men's class, kids. If you're anybody, but especially men's class loves to jump. When you're drawing, when you bring up your knee, you're drawing your core in every time. You're done with that. Now we've got to do some second work. Thankfully, we don't have to go back to those cobbler pose releves because we already did both legs. We're going to do a little arm work. So here are your little tiny, little tiny weights. You do not need weights. This is going to be difficult with nothing else going on. We start here and we're stretching and plieing down into essentially goddess pose. Down and up, down and up. If you don't have weights and you would like weights, you can use things like soup cans. But just be careful not to drop them on your bare toes. Okay, and then we're gonna hold this plie and we're gonna go in, out, up. In, out, up. In, out, up. In, out, up. <sighs> Pay no attention to the background noise, that would be Miss Ruby doing a little homeschooling work. You do not have to come out of this plie. If your legs are not yet tired, stay in your plie. Um, we're gonna move on to a circle here. You take your arms out into a jazz second. Make sure your arms are in front of your body and then turn hands down. And we're gonna do some outward circles. Make sure your buns are turned on in this position. I am totally capable of holding this in just my quadriceps and my hamstrings. And I have to be conscious about firing those gluteal muscles as well. 
So I did eight outward circles and eight inward circles there. Now we're going to take a little traveling step that isn't any bigger than your mat. Okay. We're going to start with a long tendu here and then we step, step, tendu other side, step, step, tendu. You can leave it there. If that feels good, if you feel beautiful doing that, just stay there. But you can see, you can deeply plie to get across. You can do like a full jump and click your heels together in what is essentially a chasse. Uh -huh. You can also lift this leg. Make sure that you protect your lower back if you're lifting this leg. You can also jump the arabesque, which I won't be doing today. I'm gonna to start on my weak side. You're gonna stop on a side. Now I am gonna use the bar. So I might be going off camera. I'm just gonna hold the wall. You hold your arabesque and you lift. Okay, so you plie the knee you're standing on and you lift the gesture leg up and down. Teeny tiny lifts to really pause, pause, thank you, and really get a burn going there. Oh, you might need a tiny stretch there. Okay, and then you do this combo again, up and up, up, up. And you've got it, this time we're gonna land on the other side, whichever side you haven't done yet. So I'm going to land here. I'm going to hold that in plie and lift this here. Oh, I'm paying attention to getting that in a position so that this is firing my hamstrings and my glutes, not my low back. I don't want to wake up tomorrow and feel that my low back is sore. That's not the point of leg work. Bring that through the little mermaid stretch. Whew, if you're like me and you need that. Whew. And then we're gonna come down to the floor. And I like, we're gonna do some um, like Jane Fonda style leg lift stuff. And that really digs my hip into the floor quite cruelly. So I like to double up my mat before I try those. Now, let me tell you what's supposed to happen here. What's supposed to happen here is you cross what would be if you were laying here the top leg over in front. You put it up on eleve, and you sickle it sort of cruelly, which kind of gives me the heebie-jeebies. Um, and then you're using this under leg to do a ver uh, various things that work. If you want to modify, you can put it behind you which is what I'm going to do because I find that this really limits my range of motion, um, which makes me sad. But if you're here um, and you are like me the first time that I tried this exercise, I was like, how do they, how do they make this stay here? Okay. You can wrap your arm around and hold right here. Or if you need more space because of your leg length, you can elevate and just try not to look at your foot. Okay. No one, we know we're not trying to take in a ballet technique here. Um, but I know that it's going to bother some of you to go, oh, I can't, I can't stand it. I can't look at my foot. So point and lift up and down. This is where you can see it really digs your hip into the ground. It feels kind of terrible. Okay. And then you can keep it up there. Do some little pulses. All right. Until you can't do any more. You can repeat that in a flexed position up and down and then lifting and again here I can do all of this with my inner thigh and my quad um, but if I concentrate I can engage my glutes my deep six rotators my other things like that okay so make sure that you do do that then you're gonna come down to your elbow here and bring your hand here and you can try um, you keep your feet together Turn out a parallel, either one is fine. And the goal is to lift it all off the ground and back up. Okay, so a little bit of leg, 
a lot of core. You can also try holding one up and keeping it there, bringing the other one to it, okay, in order to get more work there. Then roll over on your stomach and part your knees, flex your knees, and bring your, what are those, those are my heels, together. And then what we're gonna try and do is lift our whole lower extremities up towards the ceiling like we're trying to put our first position on the ceiling. Now you can use a resistance band here if you wanna do a little bit more work. And it goes just above your knees. Try not to worry about whether it stays, it might not stay flat, it might cut in a little bit. Everybody's got uh, something on their legs, but don't worry about that. Worry about all the great work you're getting. And then you want to put your hands, well, you want to put your forehead on your hands, flex here, and then lift up. And again, you want to be really focused on keeping this out of your lower back. So I can put it into my lower back, and that looks more like me pulling my heels toward the back of my head. I don't want you to do that. I want you to push the soles of your feet up towards the ceiling. You'll probably have a lot less range of motion that way, but it's going to be about your actual glutes and hamstrings there. It won't be you just swinging things into a low back. This isn't about your arabesque. This particular exercise is not, okay? I know that it is really similar to lots of those things that we do where we, where we work the arabesque flexibility there, but it's just, happens to be laying in the same position. Okay, now you're gonna to flip to the other side. You don't need this for the other side. That exercise doesn't work that way. I just shift over to my little double padded place so that I'm ready to go. And then I bend this one up and then I'm ready. I can do my pointed lifts here. And you can do lots of things here, right? That the fitness people may or may not know about. You can do lifts. You can do stay up and tiny pulses, okay? And then you can repeat that with a flexed foot. You can also do circles, outward circles, and inward circles. The positioning here forces you to use only the muscles in this leg, especially if you're working here, because in this position, you actually have turned off all your rotators, all this stuff back here. You've actually stretched it open so it can't contract, which is kind of magical. The fitness people have got it figured out there. That's like really smart. Now you're isolating one leg at a time. Your core is still on fire, but you are not using the other leg to compensate. Okay. Then you also have this one, right? Where you can hold it here, hold one up here. I have to come down here so I have more range of motion. You hold one up here and then you bring the lower leg up to meet it. I feel that mostly in my core. Like my core is the thing that wants me to stop doing this right now. Not my legs, but we always want more core dancers. That's what we want. Then you can put both together and lift both and lower, lift both and lower. If that's a little bit too hard for you, don't be legalistic about being a straight line. Bring your feet forward a bit so that you're shaped more like like a boomerang and then try and lift that'll give you some more range of motion then you're going to you could if you wanted to repeat the uh, little froggy presses here but I'm not going to do that now I'm going to press up to my downward dog <sighs> feel a bit of a sinus infection that I've got in my face hello there and then I'm going to walk my hands back and roll up. Be careful when you get up off the floor um, for the first time. And then uh, it's always nice to get your, when you've been on the floor, it's nice to get your heart rate back up a little bit. So you can pony, right? You can balance a, you can go back to that chasse arabesque thing. You can go back to the Charleston thing. Just something to kind of get your, your heart rate up. Other things that um, uh, bar classes will offer you for a little like pump to your cardio. Um, in the midst of doing closer work are like, you can, you can do, you can start in first and go second, first, second, first. I'm about to add this to men's class 
you start this out here and then you can start to jump to each of those right to raise your heart rate and then i won't do the most intense but the most intense is to be here and then jump in and like and beat and then come back out and you can really beat front to back or you can just like click your heels together like you're Dorothy. Okay, and then come back out. And uh, that's a great way to get your heart right up. But mine's up right now. Mine's up just talking and giving you options. I'm great, I'm fine. So get your heart rate back up from being on the floor just for one last little dealy bob before we finish. I want to get your heart rate back up before we begin this last range of motion thing, which I also am going to introduce to men's class when we get back into uh, the classroom. And it is to start in, fitness people call this a curtsy lunge. And essentially, if you flex the toes on the floor and step from second back into quasi, you've got it. There it is, okay? You bring it up and you tondu. This isn't a real tondu. Again, right, for stability, I'm gonna like grip the floor with my toes and use the ball of my foot, where if I really wanted a tondu, I wouldn't put any weight there. Go ahead and put some weight there, then come back down, big développé. In a perfect world, you don't have to. I have to catch myself there, and then come back into my curtsy lunge, tondu, and brush, catch myself. But if you don't have to catch yourself, Tondu, that's better, right? You go up and then you would brush back into here, which I can do one time, but not oh, many times. Okay, so Tondu, down, double pay, down, Tondu, down, okay? And then of course, if you are trying to intensify matters as I move to the other side, you can eliminate this Tondu and then you can go to just there and curtsy. There, oh good, and curtsy over and over. But I actually like the tondu in between or the little low in between, not just because it's a bit of a break, but because um, it helps steady my balance. I'm done with that. Doing a little bit more cardio again. This is like, this is a frontward attitude. And just here, again in a ballet class, we would want your hips to be straight forward. Turned out, inner thigh showing to the ceiling, teacup on your heel, all that good stuff. But if you add this twist to make it a little bit bouncier, your hips are going to go side to side. And that's okay because this isn't a ballet class, it's just a little fitness class designed for dancers. And of course you can jump that as well, right? Huh, huh. I'm not gonna do that. In fact, I'm gonna take off my weighted vest because girl can't breathe. You can also take that attitude into a hamstring curl behind you and go one and then the other. Stretching out the quadriceps a little bit. And then you can jump that one as well. How do you jump that one? If you're down for that, do it. We're gonna do some little uh, fitness people call these like skater jumps. Ruby, Renee, please, for like five more minutes. Um, and you can glee saw to one side, we saw back from where you came from. And again, you can keep this small and sort of go up and over, up and over. You also don't have to jump at all. 
you can leave like a long lunge instead and go step long lunge step long lunge um, or you can do the up and over like a little rainbow or you can shoot side to side and really push you can do those in parallel or turned out either one's great if you've got more space than i do you can challenge yourself and get really far we're going to do that in men's class and try and uh have a little competition when we get back to um, our space um so uh now oh we've made it to the stretchy part and uh again this is my first video so i have no idea if my wall is off camera or not but i'm going to do a quadricep stretch where i hold the top of my foot and I place my knee down towards the floor and stretch my quad there. And then you can also bring that out into the answer pose, kick back into your foot. Try and keep your hips square, okay? It's not like an attitude derriere. We keep our hips and our belly button all going in the same direction if we can. Oh, if your legs are tired like mine. That might be feeling quite challenging right now. Now I'm gonna do the other leg. Oh. Oh. Stretching the quadricep in like a traditional runner stretch. Oh. And then coming out if you want that into dancer's pose. Foot slipping away from me a little bit because sweat. Trying to keep my hips square. Oh. Coming out of the center and for once not doing a plie. Now I'm gonna get my yoga blocks. If you don't have yoga blocks, this is a really inexpensive fitness tool. Um, that is really, really wonderful for a variety of reasons. Because for example, this stretch is so great. And I don't need my yoga blocks. I can almost put my face on the floor, no big deal. But if I'm being asked to do this yoga stretch where in a perfect world, we're gonna keep our hips square and flat. I could put a breakfast tray right here. Okay, they're flat there. They're not gonna twist side to side. And then I'm gonna twist through my waist and come here and try and keep my hips square. All of a sudden, I can get a much better twist if I'm not quite so far, if I'm a little bit further off the ground. So that's a good way to do that. Oh, I really struggle with that pose. We're gonna be asking you um, next week to work, uh, to possibly consider taking on a dance goal while you're away from the studio. And if I were gonna do a dance goal, it would probably be related to um, shoulder flexibility um, because I, I struggle with that. Um, this is another way that I use my yoga blocks is for our half split uh, position that we in lots of my classes have um, taken to using and we get this from yoga. Um, and the goal, if you're looking at the dancer from the side, the goal is that her hip and her knee would be in line, okay, on the back leg. So we don't want you to sit back like this. Everybody can do that. Um, everybody who's got two legs basically can do that. What we want you to do is get forward and then we want your front knee to be straight is the first goal. But we want it not with this rounded back I'm doing right now. We want you to have a flat back. And for my flexibility, I can't put my hands on the ground and have a flat back here. I can't lift my tail feathers and really stretch into the hamstring, the back of the knee, and the top of the calf of that leg that's in front. I have to have some yoga blocks so that I can press down and flatten my back and lengthen my, my neck. So, yoga blocks, totally awesome. Nobody is brawling to buy yoga blocks. So, whether you order those on Amazon or you go buy those at Walmart or your local gym, um, they will have them because they're not toilet paper. Press, flat, great, that's better. Into that, I'm having to tend to my fingers a little bit here. You can also, yoga blocks are super, if, are super versatile because if I wanted it to be, if I was a little bit closer to my goal, 
I can make them shorter. See, that doesn't work for me because I have to ground my back in this position in order to make it work. So then I can go like I just did. Oh dear, I'm not quite flat here. I can feel in my shoulder blades that my most upper back is not all the way flat. I need a little bit more height. And I can turn them this way and then I really can engage and get the flat back that my body knows about there and stretch into that. So that doesn't have anything to do with our leg workout today, but I, um, I love my yoga blocks and uh, I highly recommend them. Um, thank you for coming today and um, I will have more videos up um, starting Monday. Have a great day.